What's going on guys? I'm Timmy Joe. I make videos about computers all over the internet. A little bit of an interesting setup I've got going on here. Yeah, RTX, and yeah, it's running on a CRT monitor. I would say this is my dream CRT monitor. There are just maybe a tiny handful of better monitors than this, uh, but you know, like we're talking thousands of dollars for anything above this pay grade. This was about a $500 monitor new. And yes, we're playing Counter-Strike at 1920 by 1440 greater than HD resolution and we're playing it at 100 Hertz and I just got smashed in the head and you wouldn't know it from uh, you know my, my dying right there but I've actually spent the last couple of days playing shooters on this thing and it has it's almost like cheating it is such a good monitor it is so extremely buttery smooth 100 Hertz when you're running at 200 frames a second and uh, you've linked it up through a uh, DVI to uh, VGA connector which is allowing this modern hardware to run this old of a monitor but it's it's just it's like an experience I've never experienced before and I've played with a few high refresh rate monitors but I'm here to tell you this is where it's at for first person shooters this is where it's at for even Apex Legends where it's at for Fortnite where it's at for PUBG where it's at for this I played Doom on it yesterday and it was just extremely buttery smooth it's ridiculous so let's take you through a little journey on what it takes to run a CRT monitor, the uh, professional series ViewSonic PF795. Uh, and I want to thank Sarah J, who reached out to me on Facebook after my last CRT video. I grabbed whatever I could get, and I gave a kind of brief, you know, I said I, my dream monitor would be a ViewSonic that has, you know, a high refresh rate and a decent resolution in around 19 inches. And he happened to just have one sitting around. Here, we'll buy a P90. But as you can see, oh, if I can press the right buttons here, look at the smoothness. Look at how smooth it is. It's ridiculous. And it's running at a really nice crispy resolution. And it doesn't look that great in Windows, but it looks so good in games. I've been having a, a, just a riot playing shooters. And I, I, I just, I don't know. I'm going to keep it on my desk, I think. That's how good it is. See if I can get this guy. Oh, I killed him! A headshot with a P90 from across the room! All right, let's make this happen. Let's make this video happen. So, thanks, Sergey. Let's get this thing rolling, and I'll show you guys all the intricate problems I had getting this working, but how, in the end, it's actually worth it. As you can tell, I just headshot at the guy from across the room with my UMP. Ooh, yes, I'm a little excited, I know. Here, cue the intro or whatever you're going to do. And then we'll, well, I died. We'll talk about it. Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! Right. You're going to be pumped on that, right, Will? Computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Alright, we're back. What's up? It's Timmy Joe, and uh, yes, I want to, uh, dare I say, proclaim that this is the ultimate gaming monitor, the ultimate, well, first-person shooter, battlegrounds, you know, computer game monitor I've ever played with. And I know I'm not really a great authority on the subject. I was the one that said I couldn't tell 144 hertz versus 60 hertz, but I actually just believe that that monitor just wasn't that great. And because uh, I have a 165 hertz 1440p monitor from a brand called Mbest that I've been uh, playing with, and I actually like it a lot better than that Zowie monitor I looked at. So, uh, you know, my past videos aside, this thing has changed my life. It has, you know, changed my whole understanding of playing first person shooters, okay? And I was a big Counter-Strike guy back in the day, 1.6, 1.4 I think is where I started, or 1.3. Uh, we used to play on a local server and stuff like that, and I played on the crappiest of hardware. And uh, this is actually a flat panel as well. It has a flat pane of glass that runs over a curved CRT inside. You can actually see that it's inset a bit when you look in the sides of it. But it helps with glare, it helps with viewability. It's, it's, you know, it's worth having for sure. And we're running on this weird little odd couple of a pairing, RTX 2080, 9700K, and the MSI Trident X. And it's outputting to this, and it's, it's working, and I believe it's actually doing, uh, DisplayPort is actually running in an analog mode, and it's doing the digital to analog conversion. It works beautifully, running at 1920 by 1440, a little better than HD resolution at 100 hertz. 
It's a gaming experience like I've never had. And actually, like I say, I got a pretty good 165 hertz monitor. Yeah, that's that's pretty good shit, okay? But this is just, it's a different like retro feeling. And I swear I got better at the shooters yesterday. And I, I was gonna do this video yesterday and I wound up playing video games all day on the damn thing. And I lost track of time and then it was just ran out of time. So uh, it was that good. It enhanced my first person shooter, my PUBG, I didn't play much PUBG or Fortnite, but my Apex Legends, I played like five rounds of Apex Legends yesterday. I played like, I don't know, uh, maybe five or six rounds of Counter-Strike. Like I wasted like four hours or five hours yesterday playing video games and I was happy for it. It was awesome. It was a really awesome experience. It's just so fluid. And when you move this nice Corsair mouse, you know, with a high, you know, DPI and it's running through here and, you know, there's zero input lag and you can just like see there's no ghosting or any, uh, you know, blurriness on the fast moving images. You can get those headshots and those kills a lot easier. It's pretty damn cool. Okay. So, What's, what's the deal with this? It's the ViewSonic PF795. I got it from a viewer of the channel. He saw my other CRT video where I said this would be my dream monitor and he had one and he gave it to me for the price of, of shipping basically, which was awesome. And uh, it came from about four hours away and cost about $100 to ship because it's 65 pounds. I cannot believe it. But really the only problem with it is, uh, you know, if I, Put a little bit of that on here and I rub like here, you know, I'm putting a little bit too much foam, but you can see, you know, there's some brown on there because uh, Sergey, you got a bad habit, or at least you did, because like a lot of CRT monitors, it's full of nicotine. But uh, you know what? The brightness is pretty good on it. I got it all bubbly here. I should, yeah. anyways. Uh, if you go into uh, contrast, usually with CRT monitors, you got to jack up the brightness and contrast no matter what, because they're just never as bright as you know they were when they came out of the box. But this one's pretty, pretty bright still. Uh, I would say that it's lost some brightness. It's not quite as good as I would imagine it would have been, but I'd say this thing's running at like 95% operating efficiency. If, you know, as far as brightness and the color, you know, and the, uh, you know, it's, it's not bad. As far as the desktop experience, I would take one of these monitors any day of the week, okay? Or like actually just any crappy LCD. For, for that matter, that's over 21 inches over this thing, because it's a little blurry, especially at its max resolution in Windows. I don't really find that it's easy to read text quite as well as you know it should be, because uh, there's a, plain, a pane of glass over here. It's running at a high resolution on a small like uh, monitor. I, I just, they hadn't figured out the desktop experience. I'm sure it's better than anything else, uh, any other uh, CRT at the time, but, I'd much rather do Windows stuff, video editing on, you know, a wide monitor than an LCD, obviously, especially 4K and stuff like that. But as far as, you know, reading text and stuff like that, that's not what we're here for. We're here for gaming and the gaming experience was awesome. It was great. So ViewSonic PF 795, hard to find information on it. There's no like product page still up for it on ViewSonic, but CNET's pretty good at holding all of the specs and stuff for this stuff. I can't really find many like, written reviews for it. There was no YouTube back then to go check out, but we see here that it runs uh, at uh, 1920 by 1440 at 73 Hertz. On the box, it actually said 1800 by, uh, by 1440, but I don't know if this, I just have a little bit older of a, a monitor, but it works at the, the resolution it says there and up to 100 Hertz, which is awesome. I've overclocked it by like, you know, 27 Hertz. That's pretty damn cool. Uh, so yeah, and then I check out some reviews like, uh, you know, that I found on some old forums. I own a PF uh, 795. I love it. Uh, apparently he, got, he bought his roommate a cheaper PS 790, which had, wasn't flat and he would never go back. And then if you go over to a Nantech, I found, uh, I was trying to find an MSRP in uh, October of 2000. This guy says he paid 500 bucks for his brand new on Onvia. Uh, so, you know, the, it, the, that, that's how much it would have cost. It's a pretty expensive monitor for the time, like account for inflation, that's like a $700 monitor. So yeah, yeah, this wouldn't have been a cheap monitor. They would have been a professional grade, like I say. So you go into UFO testing and once the FPS goes up, like the ghosting section of this, it just, it's like the crispiest little alien running at a hundred frames a second right here. And it's just, it's just awesome. So 
you can tell it's running at the right refresh rate because I've got my camera here running at uh, 100 or 1 over 100 shutter speed. So it's matched up to the 100 hertz of the monitor and it looks, you know, as good as I could capture this. Uh, I'm running, in, you know, this video actually at 60 frames a second. So hopefully that account, you know, helps you see how good this thing is. It's hard to film a screen, especially a CRT and get any kind of good results. So what if you want to go with one of these things? You know, I'm telling you, it's, it's awesome and it's actually still really valid, especially running with modern hardware. Well, you know, there's some issues with games. There's an issue, you know, a little bit of issue with conversions, but you can generally figure it out with one of these and, you know, playing with the settings or Googling how to get 4x3 working in a certain game. But where I really ran in, where, where you would run into the problem is they're just so hard to find. In fact, if you look on eBay, there are, you know, a handful of them, but most of them are the curved version. Most of them are some sort of, uh, you know, lower version than this PF795. And there is one better one, actually. I actually, the, this is my dream monitor, but this one here is the ultimate. It's a 21 inch, which would be two inches bigger than this monitor, uh, 20 inches effective. And uh, it's the GS815. And uh, they're trying to sell, he's selling it for $449, oh my goodness, that's ridiculous. Uh, but he actually has a spec sheet for it, which is pretty awesome. Can I get it to come up for God's sakes? There we go. And this one runs at 1920 by 1440 at 80 hertz with that, uh, it's still a flat one too, but with that uh, little bit of a bigger screen, now that would be uh, like the ultimate ultimate. But uh, this one here is pretty close to the, the ultimate monitor. So yeah, uh, once I ha you know figured out the resolution thing, you know, in, in NVIDIA control panel, I was, I was like dumbfounded. I couldn't get it to work. Once I got it to work, uh, you know, I set the resolutions in uh, the custom, you know, section here. And then I actually loaded them from Windows. Uh, I, I got it all working and it, it worked fine because I was having an issue when I first hooked this up. It wouldn't show all the resolutions. It, it just showed a native resolution of 1280 by 1024 and a max uh, hertz of 85 hertz. And I was getting all confused, so I hooked up um, with DVI to a 780 Ti using a dual link DVI to VGA connector. I hooked it up to this thing, and Windows 10 would show every single resolution from uh, you know the 1920 all the way down to you know 800 by 600. So uh, something was weird with the conversion on this thing. And Sergey sent this over. He had one. It's a uh, display port to VGA connector, and it's supposed to do uh, a conversion. Actually, DisplayPort has an analog mode that I would imagine this should be using, but something's lost in translation when you use these adapters. I actually even bought a second one off Amazon hoping it would fix it, and it didn't. But I had to go into the NVIDIA control panel, set uh, custom resolutions for everything, and you know they once they tested, I was actually trying to load them from here. Like you can click on a resolution and hit it apply, and it usually applies. It wasn't applying, so I thought it was broken, but once I realized if I test the resolution and it works and I save it in the customize there, I can go into uh, Windows and actually apply them directly from here. And if you have to change the Hertz, you go uh, advanced display settings, display adapter properties, monitor, and you change the Hertz in here. And it actually works. Like you can tell I, I'm running at 100 Hertz because the camera's picking it up properly. If I switch over to 73 Hertz, this is gonna start flipping out. And actually, what's weird is every time you uh, apply a, a new resolution, it makes the screen all wonky. Like if I go to 80 hertz here, you see um, the, the it's all off center, and I actually have to go into the monitor properties and uh, you know actually change like the keystone and like the the position and the the zoom and you know it even will like go wonky like this. So once you get that set up, as long as you leave the monitor plugged in, it saves all of that information. But uh, we'll go back to 100 hertz so we don't flip out the cameras. There we go. So yeah, let's go and we'll just, uh, I'll play some music and you can watch some gameplay I recorded yesterday for a couple of minutes. And then when we come back, I'll do a little final conclusion like I always tend to do. <gasps>
What did you think of that footage? Here I got Fortnite loaded up just for one last little bit of gameplay here. Like, look at when I spin the battle bus. I hope that it somehow translates to this. Look how fluid it is. It's ridiculous. And it doesn't take that much horsepower to run on this, you know, because it's not, it's effectively 1080p resolution or a bit more. It you know, Most cards could get, uh, you know, a high enough refresh rate or high enough uh, FPS on this. I guess I should jump out of the damn bus. In, in order, see, look at this. Here, you shut up. I'm going to mute that. But, yeah, look how fluid it is. So, you know, if you did run across one of these monitors, okay, and I'm talking a high-quality, uh, you know, CRT from the late 2000s, early, to you know, 2000, whatever, 2002, something like that, and it was a flat panel, a high-resolution, high-refresh rate, can I recommend that you play some video games on it? A hundred percent. Are there better LCDs out there these days? Technically, yes, but once I played on this monitor, it's an experience like I've never experienced because I never had one as a child, obviously, but it's just this cool, fluid, just beautiful way of playing video games that in shooters especially, okay, games where your reaction time really matters, where you need to bump over and grab a look at someone's head and shoot, and you have a really nice mouse and you have it hooked up to a high-end system and somehow get everything, all the things playing together and get the 100 hertz refresh rate, I can certainly recommend playing on a CRT over an LCD. And yes, you could go and buy a, you know, a thousand dollar monitor that's gonna have as good if not better refresh rate and reaction time than this thing. But in the, uh, you know, in the end, this is an old technology that I think it just it can't be matched. Really, the, the experience on it, the you know, modern day monitors can't really do the same thing, even if they have those high end specs and stuff like that. So I'm terrible at Fortnite, so please see, I just went through the back door. Ah, see someone shooting at me. There we go. Ah, I tried. I tried. I did better than I usually would anyways. I benchmarked this game a thousand times and I've never been any good at it. But in that playing, I felt connected even if I was just kind of farting around trying to get an outro for this video like I would with no other monitor. And I definitely would recommend if you somehow run across this high level of a CRT, to give her a try on a modern computer. It is absolutely hilariously fun, and it's still a good experience to this day. So I'm at Watch Jimmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. I hope that, you know, I, I translated the feeling of using this monitor over into YouTube land. It's really hard to, you know, capture footage. I want to thank uh, the viewer who sent this out, Sergey. Thanks, man. This is exactly what I was hoping to, you know, to get for a CRT to do a video like this. It, it's perfect. And I want to thank MSI for sending out the Trident so we could actually power this thing to its absolute full potential, which has just been hilarious. But uh, what did you guys think of the footage? Does it translate over? What is your experience with CRTs? Did you ever get this good of an experience? And maybe you know exactly what I'm talking about? Leave comments below, but I'm out watching each old gram, Instagram and Twitter, whatever. And I've been screaming at this camera for way too many takes, so I'm gonna leave you with that. But uh, leave comments below about your experience with CRTs and I will see you guys in another video. And if you ever get the chance, hook one of these things up and have a blast.